I am Dr. Ulya Bayram. I'm an assistant professor in Çanakkale on Sigismark University, Turkey. And with my collaborator, Dr. Lamia Benheba from NCS, Morocco, we conducted this study as part of this shared task. In our classification framework, we were inspired by real life applications. And real life applications in social media are based on conducting suicide risk identification at the latest tweet or latest post level. Therefore, we classify tweets individually and to obtain the person level scores, we apply a majority voting mechanism. And this is our overall framework. Uh, for pre-processing, we applied standard approaches, as you can see here, but we kept stop words, emojis, and hashtags, and we did not apply any stemming. As features, we extracted n-grams that include unigrams and bigrams, and we eliminated infrequent features from each set. As classifiers, we selected these methods, logistic regression, the linear version, because it was recommended for small data sets. And we selected two naive-based classifiers, Gaussian and multinomial, um, because they have different mathematical frameworks and assumptions. We selected linear SVM because it was successful um, within dataset evaluations. We actually wanted to include RBF SVM because of its nonlinear structure, but the parameter search uh, using grid search methods turned out to be really costly, so we had to eliminate that. And we came up with our own ensemble method, which is a weighted sum of the results of the methods above, linear SVM, two naive bias, and logistic regression, uh, to boost the overall performance per tweet. And we also use uh, Grubert, a multi-layer bidirectional deep learning method, uh, to evaluate the effect of increasing complexity on this uh, classification problem compared to the standard methods above. We also evaluated and eliminated the following methods. And um, before eliminating them, of course, we did our best with parameter searches and tuning. So we made sure uh, they were fairly evaluated before elimination. And excess weight density here is an approach that uh, creates lexical networks from training sets and then takes the words and matches their uh, these words to the nodes in the networks and then measures the density between them. So uh, yes, we eliminated these methods. And for our feature selection uh, framework, we apply these five steps. We selected feature selection because we thought features usually contain a lot of noise and the presence of noise might negatively affect many supervised classifiers. So we train a logistic regression with linear classifiers, you could classifier using all features, and then we slice it up and then we obtain the ranks uh, this, this classifier um, attached to, you know, the scores, the, the important scores for, you know, based on suicidal and control classes. And then we take these ranks and then we use the top end features to train the, and evaluate the following classifiers. And uh, the classification, the, the evaluations were based on leave and out framework. Uh, and leave and out means one person. We left one person at every time and all tweets of that person uh, in order to uh, have um, a fair classification result within data set evaluations. And here are the results. These are the results over the you know, shorter spanning data set. We, we have peaks here over the four methods, and we see that including all features would result in a random classification, basically. And this is the longer spanning data set. We also have peaks here, and then also including all features would uh, create a lot of uh, problems. So here are the best results. And among the best results, we see that ensemble method is the best among the rest for the 30 days data set. Meanwhile, the deep learning method Grubert is not as good as the other approaches for this within data set classification. For the longer spanning data set, ensemble method is also, again, uh, good. Uh, meanwhile, Grubert is the worst among them. So next evaluation is of the unlabeled data provided by the shared task organizers. And they also provided us what they obtained as their baseline results. By baseline, they apply a logistic regression, also linear, but different from our logistic regression, 
they merge all tweets per person into a large single text, and then they classify that huge text instead of classifying individual tweets and voting them like we do. And we see the effects here. We see that our approaches, our logistic regression is much better than their logistic regression because we applied a voting mechanism on the third day's data set. Meanwhile, our ensemble is also good, but logistic regression is better in terms of AUC, but other scores are higher on the ensemble. For the longer spanning data set, however, we see a completely different story. We see that their baseline outperformed our methods. And this made us come up with a hypothesis that older tweets do not contain suicidal ideation. That is why when the old tweets are merged with most recent tweets, Yes, they return high classification results, but all tweets, when they, they are classified alone, they create a lot of noise because they don't have any clues regarding suicidal ideation. So that is our hypothesis. To evaluate that hypothesis, we do an additional work after the um, shared task is over, of course. We apply a logistic regression with time decaying coefficients. We multiply each vote by this coefficient where we give less weighted votes for the oldest tweets by you know, considering the time passed between the current tweet and the most recent tweet. When we do that, we reach near a uh, score of 70% AUC, as you can see here. That validates our hypothesis that all tweets are noisy and they do not provide additional information and if we eliminate their weight, their importance, our scores are higher. These are our overall conclusions. Simple machine learning methods are successful, uh, especially over the 30 days data set. Voting is important and uh, future researchers should consider that. And we also prove that older tweets lack suicidal ideation and they generate noise. And we prove that through our hypothesis and uh, extra relations. We, and, and yeah, researchers should uh, consider not using old tweets in their future research. And uh, we obtain uh, poor performance uh, from evaluating deep learning with the shallow deep learning methods because of you know, overfitting, noise sensitivity, and they are computationally expensive. So we should ask ourselves that, should we completely rely on deep learning methods or should we also evaluate uh, simple machine learning methods on our problems as well after fairly tuning them, of course. And in future work, we consider uh, conducting further experiments with the temporal um, aspects and other references. And thank you for listening.